Hi there, welcome back to Auto Hockey with Jason Altenberg. Thank you for joining me. Uh, recently, I received a comment from Johannes von Barr, who said, Just found your channel, subscribing and hoping for more Auto Hockey content in the future. Just wanted to say thank you. I really appreciate comments like this. It keeps me moving, keeps me going. And I just love seeing that people are finding some value out of the content that I'm posting, that people are learning things, that people are enjoying this. Thank you, Johannes. On that note, recently, Dron Lothan had posted a comment asking, is it possible to have a script click when the mouse changes from the default pointer to a hand? I think I might be able to do a lot with that kind of functionality. Now, I'm not really sure exactly what kind of things that you might be able to do with that functionality, but it certainly got me curious. Could we detect what happens when the mouse changes and then do something based on that. So we'll go ahead and create a quick new auto hotkey script. We'll name this cursor test. And when we create a new auto hotkey script, what we'll notice is that when we open up a text editor and we drop this new auto hotkey script in, we have a couple of different lines that are already pre-populated when we created in this method. We have our no environment, we have send mode input, we have set working directory as a scripter. Uh, there are some comments up here that tell us what those things do. We don't really need to worry about these for this example, just making note that those are there. So we'll start with a simple control one hotkey. So pressing control and then the number one, we'll fire this hotkey and we'll do message box, the percent sign a underscore cursor and then return. I'll go ahead and save this one. We'll go tools, auto hockey, we'll run this. And now as I'm hovering over here, you can see that my cursor is an I beam. I'll press control one and we actually get unknown. That's kind of interesting. Let's try that one more time. There's I beam, I beam, I beam. Okay, that's really what I was expecting. That first one was a little bit odd. Not really sure why we got that unknown. Maybe for just a moment there, it was showing something different. As I hover over this folder, you can see that we've got the arrow. If I hover over this, again, we have arrow. If I go over here, we have size, NWSE. And again, if I, or, and if I go up to the top here, we have size north south. So you can see that as I'm going to different areas and my cursor is changing into different things. Let's try this one. Uh, we have an unknown right here as well in between these two. So there are a few instances in which AutoHotKey is going to deliver an unknown. And one of those situations is if we go to say a google.com here and we hover over this Google search and I press control one, uh, what we see there is we get the unknown for when the cursor turns into a hand. We do get the arrow over here. We do get the I beam up here, but as it turns into the hand, what we're getting is unknown. So our trigger is going to be unknown, but we've seen that there are some other circumstances, such as when we're hovering in between these two frames here, in which our cursor is going to return as unknown. So with that being said, what we can do is we can do control two in our same script and we'll do a loop of the infinite variety here. And in our loop, we'll sleep for 50 milliseconds and we'll do an if statement. If a underscore cursor, which is again that variable that holds what state the cursor is in, equals unknown message box, quote, it's a trap. And we'll hit file, we'll hit save. We have the ending part of our loop right here. We can do a return right here and we can hit file, save tools, auto hotkey and run. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to replace it with that instance. And now when I press control two, I immediately get the, it's a trap. And again, I think that as I'm pressing the control key here, I'm getting this message because at some point the cursor is doing something that's unknown to auto hotkey. So, your mileage may vary in using this script. But one thing I can show real quick is that now that I'm running this, as you can see, 
Whenever I hover over something that it looks like a link, I get the, it's a trap. Over here, I'm feeling lucky. Now it's switched to, I'm feeling funny. I'm feeling hungry. I'm feeling trendy. I don't think I've ever seen this functionality inside of Google. Is this simply because I'm pressing the control key? Or is it simply because I'm hovering over top of it? Hmm. Interesting. All right. So that aside, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to now do, oh, well, first of all, let's disable this script. I'm going to go down to my hop bar. I'm going to right click. I've got two versions of this running. Let's exit both. All right, control two, that might actually account for some of the strangeness there. If I had two different versions of a script running that are doing the same thing, that could cause some issues. Okay, so let's do control three, colon, colon, loop. And we're going to this time, we're gonna, we're gonna perform an action when our cursor is in a certain state. So the state that we're going to be looking for here is we'll do I beam. So we'll say uh, loop here, we'll go infinite and then we'll go sleep 50. Uh, if a cursor equals I beam and we'll put another set of brackets in for our if statement here, sleep 50, click, and we'll do another sleep, 50. Oh, sorry, this click didn't actually need to be in those. Uh, sleep 50. Um, we'll do, actually, I think what would be fun here is if we take inside of our folder, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a real quick copy of this one, and I'm going to go to my desktop uh, where I have a copy of the Gettysburg address as a text file. I'll pop this text file open just so you can see that there's nothing really crazy going on here. Uh, we have the Gettysburg address four score and seven years ago shall not perish from the earth. This is a pretty long statement, so I'll spare you the reading of it. But uh, if you have a moment, pause the video, take a read or go find a good speaker online. Let them read it to you. I'm not going to do that today unless there's some real interest on this channel. File read, just gonna send it and gettysburg.txt. What this is going to do is that it's going to do a file read command. It's going to read into this variable, just going to send it. That variable is going to contain the contents of gettysburg.txt after file read puts it into it. Maybe not the most eloquent description of what that does, but we're moving on. We're going to sleep for another 50 milliseconds. Then we're going to send input here. Just going to send it. Remember, just going to send it now contains the entirety of the Gettysburg address, or at least that portion, you know, portion that I found on the internet. And uh, we're going to see how, how much, you know, how well that does for us. So sleep 50 again, message box. Uh, we'll do a education has been delivered and uh, Abe Lincoln would be proud. All right. And we'll go ahead and do a break here. All right. So we've got our control three now. So what this should do is that when our cursor turns into an I beam, it should sleep for a moment, it should click sleep for a moment. Then it's going to read the Gettysburg address into a variable. Then it'll sleep for another moment. And then it will send the input for just going to send it variable, which now contains, again, the Gettysburg address, sleep for 50 milliseconds. And then it will provide us with a message box saying that education has been delivered. Abe Lincoln would be proud. Let's see. Can we make Abe Lincoln proud today? Tools, auto hotkey, and we'll run it. So our script is running right now. Uh, there's really nothing indicating to us that this is happening. Uh, what we'll do here is I'm going to press enter a couple times at the end of our script here, just so that when I come back over, what I'm going to be looking for is this little transition here. As I drag over to here, it should turn into an I-beam. 
Uh, if you were using the, you know, I want to click when my cursor turns into a hand, you would just replace this I beam with unknown. So we'll go ahead and now I'm going to press control three. Nothing is happening right now because we haven't turned our cursor into an I beam, but the loop is running in the background. Notice that there's really no impact to performance. Nothing's really changed. But when I go over to here, what we should see, oh, I saw the click happen and it actually happened so quickly that it really didn't even show the uh, typing out of this, uh, of it. But we can see now we've got the Gettysburg Address delivered at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19th, 1863, four score and seven years ago, et cetera, et cetera. And now what I'll do is I'm going to squish this right here, this untitled notepad, and let's see if we can get a little bit different result with notepad. Maybe it's just that the uh, sublime text has a bit of overhead or something that blocked us from seeing it type it up. I'm going to press control three again and we'll scroll over, click. There we go. That's really kind of the effect that I was hoping for. Note that the message box did pop up slightly before the text was finished actually sending. Uh, minor inconsistency or minor quirk there to be a note uh, to note that even though it's still sending the text, it can pop up the message box didn't really impact what we were doing and what we were showing here. Uh, but I did think that that was noteworthy as it might interrupt a script or might be something you don't desire. You don't off, you don't have to put the message box there. You can do whatever you'd like with that. So finally, what I'd like to do is we'll erase this Gettysburg address. And uh, what I'll do then is I'm going to do sort of the same thing here. I'm going to copy this whole control three. I'm going to paste it. But instead of our message box, instead of our file read, instead of all that, what I'm going to do is just simply change this to be a loop. And if a cursor equals unknown, file save, what it's going to do now is once it turns into a hand, it's going to click tools, auto hotkey. We're going to run this. Oh, it's a duplicate. We need control four. I'm going to press file save. You see this little pop up right here? That's pretty useful. File save, tools, auto hotkey, run. We're going to replace our instance. So control four is now loaded with it's ready to go. So if I press control four, the moment that I hover over something where my cursor turns into a hand, it should click. So once I hover over Google search, yeah, see how it just starts clicking there? It actually is uh, clicking pretty much everything now because I didn't add a break to that loop. So it's just gonna keep clicking every time that it doesn't know what's going on underneath. It's just gonna keep clicking. It's signing me up for food52.com slash hotline. All right, so hopefully that shows just real quick. You know, if you wanna click continuously you can do that um, if that's not something that you wanted uh, what we could do is add a break here oh actually i think my script is causing me to click there uh, like i said something's going on inside of uh, this text editor that's happening so quickly that i'm not I, I just don't see what's when the cursor turns into something else I'm going to add two commands, click and break. I'll encapsulate these inside of here. We'll do file, save tools, auto hockey run, and we'll go back google.com. We'll type, type grilled cheese sandwich here, and we'll fit file, save tools, auto hockey run. This is already running. That's fine. Control four. So now when I hover over something, it should click once and then break. So there you go. You can see that we search for grilled cheese sandwich. It only happened once. I've kind of got this ready. And, and now if I press control four again, it'll kind of load up another loop and it'll be in the hopper. So the next thing that I hover over that turns it into a hand should click it, which should be um, grilled cheese sandwich uh, video up here. There we go. All right, so hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this has been something that will help you out with your journey with auto hockey. Hopefully you've learned something today. Again, I really do enjoy it if people take the time out to comment, 
on these videos. If you feel like it's helped you, uh, I'd appreciate it if you like it. And I'm always really grateful for the subscribers to these videos. It's always super great to wake up and see that I've got a new subscriber on my channel. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this. Feel free to drop a comment if I can help you with something that you're doing. And thank you for watching this, and I hope you're having a wonderful day.